Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Ted Flint. With us today is Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney, who serves the 101st Assembly District. I have to use my cheat sheet. So many counties, <laughs> Oneida, Herkimer, Otsego, Delaware, Sullivan, Ulster, Orange, basically half the state you serve. Pretty much, yeah. Just Good swath the of whole, it. Yeah, the upstate New York. Keeps you busy, keeps you on the, on the move. Keeps me in my car. Yeah. So. Well, it's, uh, it's budget time. We're getting close to the April 1st budget deadline. <laughs> Things have been really conspicuously quiet so far this week. We don't know what's happening. Yeah, well, that leaves most of us, we guess, because we see all the, the media huddled around the second floor waiting for people to emerge with uh, a couple of you know, nibble, nibbles about what's going on. And, and yeah. you know, right now we know a couple of things. The DREAM Act was thrown out. MMA was thrown out. Uh, the education tax credit was thrown out, a few things being negotiated here and, and there, but that's today. Who knows what's going to happen over the weekend and, and as we get closer to having to prepare the budget bills so we have an on-time budget, which I think sometimes there's an obsession with an on-time budget instead of a good budget, mm -hmm. uh, which concerns me. I'd rather be a few days late and get it right, right. Uh, than uh, having just something right on time. So I'm not sure where we're going, but as I mentioned all those items, none of them should be in the budget anyway. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, we're, we should be talking about the revenues of the state and the and how we're going to raise the revenues and how we're going to put those against the matching appropriations. Uh, that is exactly what the issue is. The number one issue always for me is how can we reduce our taxes since we are remain 50th as the worst state as far as the highest tax burden on our citizens. So we need to do something about that, which we... We never really address, we always circumvent it. One year, my very first year in the assembly, in 2011, we did put through a middle class tax cut. It was touted as the largest one in 58 years, uh, which is great, but that being said, isn't much when you're in New York State, but it's better than nothing. Right. I think we need to go even further with that and reducing income tax because it affects each person in the state and it is the most fair way of, for us to you know, to give everyone a break and also to lure people to come back and stay in New York because that seems to be the number one reason everyone's leaving. That's it. You know, there was a report this week that said people making over 150 pay 12.4 percent of their income to state taxes, income taxes, property taxes, sales taxes. It's got to be more than that in the end. <laughs> and well, and people making 50,000 pay the same percentage, 12.4 came out this week. It just, you're right. I mean, we're the top state in the nation when it comes to yeah. taxes overall. It's not, it's, and it's, it's, we spend all this time doing all these circuit breakers and, and yeah. all these uh, sort of um, numbing provisions that don't really solve the underlying problem, which is what's causing the, the increase in property taxes. It's unfunded mandates that are being forced on school districts and forced on our local governments, which we either starve them, or eliminate them, or, uh, you know, or, or they have to raise taxes. And uh, a lot of people say, well, we have too many local governments. I mean, the governor's always screaming about all the local governments. Uh, I don't believe in centralized control, so I think the less power that you have uh, in the state government and the mm -hmm. more you put into the local governments, whether they be a little less expensive to operate, uh, I think that's better. It's closer to the people. It's closer to what our, our system of government was set up to be, not some centralized government. And when the governor made those comments, we're sort of going off the budget on here, but when he made those comments, he was referring to a lot of what they call uh, districts, you know, like at that time they were electric districts. They're just, they, they aren't actually government entities. They're, they're actually geographic entities, it's just so you know where, where pricing and, and uh, items would go for various services that are provided. They have nothing to do with uh, providing uh, goods and services as far as payroll and, and costs to provide payroll and services to a government. They're just literally uh, geographic. So to me, that was, uh, you know, he's just using that as a, another soundbite over substance. Mm -hmm. One thing uh, not excluded from the budget process is this ethics reform package that the governor seems uh, adamant about having. Well, it seems that a lot of it has been eliminated or is on its way out, so the governor says. I mean, here's the thing that with ethics that keeps going on. Every year yeah. that I've been in since 2011, we have come up with, and the governor touts and screams about sweeping, historic ethics reform. But yet, nothing changes in Albany. Nothing. It doesn't change because we're just circling around not talking about the real issues. The real issues are big government yeah. giving tons of money to big businesses, crony capitalism or capitalism. Yeah. Another big issue that people don't talk about, remember he said we're getting rid of member items. Member items are pork. That's the money that's given to legislative leaders to hand out to their members so that they can go to their district and give money. Now, people say that a lot of people like that. I would like to give some money to my fire department so the fire department can put a new roof on or whatever. And I don't think that those are so terrible, 
But here's how it works in Albany now. We have uh, in the budget, and I don't think it's been removed yet, it's I don't know, it's like $2.6 billion in unitemized expenses put aside for legislative leaders to hand out to whomever they want. To me, that is corruption, and that's yeah. nobody's talking about that as far as the legislative leaders. It's redistributing the newspaper, wealth. It's redistributing wealth, but what it is is giving individual legislators, and by the way, only those in the majority. So you're going to see the Senate Republicans, maybe a handful of Democrats in the, uh, the Independent Democratic Conference, and the Assembly Democrats going around handing money out so they're set for the next election. And they're going to go to the minority members who represent over 6 million people in this state and say, sorry, you're not in the majority. You need to beg to the governor or one of the legislative leaders to bring something to your district. Now, I argue that some of these things are set aside in the budget as uh, capital projects fund. So the New York State Constitution says that we cannot do capital projects without putting a referendum on the ballot for the taxpayers to decide. So how are we bypassing this constitutional uh, provision in order to allow legislate? It's what I call uh, majority pork, which is being handed out. So mm -hmm. to me, that's unconstitutional. That's where, that's where the corruption is. Yeah. But we don't talk about any of that stuff. That's their inside game. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Uh, that's so we we got away from the budget a little bit. Actually, well, it's all part budget. of the budget. That it is, is in the budget. Really that to me is the single yeah. worst part of the budget among many others. Yeah. But. Okay. Uh, let's talk about human trafficking. The human trafficking bill yeah. was separated from the others. That the omnibus bill finally was voted on and, and passed in the assembly. Talk yeah, about how, really the, happy the to change. see that. Interesting. That was a bill that I I sponsored. Um, Amy Pollan sponsored it. Uh, also, and it was included in what's the, known as the Women's Equality uh, Act. Uh, the bill was separated out, finally. Amy Pollan actually endorsed my, uh, was a sponsor on my bill, I was a sponsor on her bill, and I give her a lot of credit. She was finally able to bring this bill to the floor for a vote. Uh, will it end human trafficking? No, but it's, hopefully it will be a start. It will give our law enforcement more tools to crack down on, on human trafficking issue, which many people don't believe is really an issue in New York State still, and, mm. and it's, it's there. We just don't hear about it. It's an underground world that we don't know about. But All right, let's take a look at your comments okay. on the floor on this bill. We'll come back and speak further with Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney. I just want to rise to congratulate uh, my colleague for being a just a stalwart advocate on this very, very important issue. Um, I, too, had uh, legislation very similar to my colleagues on this issue. I am so glad that after three years of the Assembly rejecting this legislation that we are finally bringing it to the floor to the vote. Uh, we're following in the footsteps of the Senate, which has passed this for a number of years. But I really want to, uh, my heart goes out to Ms. Pollan for really being a champion. Thank you so much. Well, it took a while, but finally, uh, how yeah. many years? Two, three years? Yeah, and by the way, uh, Amy Pollan, the Assemblywoman, she was for this. She said, I don't care how it gets out. Let's get it out. She brought all kinds of victims to the uh, Assembly so we could talk, hear their stories. She, she really did a great job, and I'm glad we got that over with. Let's As, get a yeah. number of other bills we need to get That's done. That's right. But and one of them may be taken up today, I hear, the, uh, part of the women's equality agenda. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the codification of Roe versus Wade. Theoret that's what it's described as. You know. What does that mean? Why do we need to codify it? Well, it's I know. It's already federal law. law. Yeah. It's established law. And actually, this is not exactly a, uh, the same as Roe versus Wade. And, there were, and, it, and it disregards the subsequent cases uh, that the Supreme Court has ruled on, such as Casey, which actually defined you know, what is actually a legal abortion and, and the standards we use in deciding what a legal abortion is. So that's another, that's going to be argued today on the floor, unnecessary bill, mm -hmm. grandstanding bill by Deborah Glick, really nothing, nothing One more House. than that. One, One House, House bill. bill, it's not going anywhere in the, in, as far as legislation. And it shouldn't, it, it, it shouldn't, we shouldn't waste our time on it, but we're going to be arguing it today on the floor. So. It's going to be a lengthy debate, you think? I think there's going to be some discussion on it. Should be yeah. interesting. Let's, um, what else we have? We have an intro. Oh, okay. With the Ellenville this High School. This is education, students. a big, a big education. intro. And they, this group was amazing. So I just, I'd love to, love all to right. see what I can't remember who, what, what, but they're a really good group. I yeah. remember. Well, I remember their, all their names. We'll look at it. We'll look go. at the uh, stand up here, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the comments intro. on the floor, and then we'll come back and we'll talk further with Assemblywoman yeah. Claudia Tenney. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for the opportunity to interrupt the proceedings to introduce a very special group of students from Ellenville High School with their teachers. Uh, Ellenville, also I, um, Ms. Gunther is also joining me in this introduction. Uh, Ellenville is a 
very important place in, in New York State history. They're having some tough times, but we're in the process of rebuilding Ellenville, and these students are here advocating for more school funding, which we're hoping is going to happen in the, uh, this year's budget. But with us today, we have Dan Hart, Graham Best, Janet Stinson, Stephanie Garcia, uh, Michaela Roycourt, did I pronounce that right? Uh, Cassandra Little, who's a student, uh, Gregory Moultrie, who is a, uh, says, uh, can't read what exactly he does, but he's involved in GAP and the Financial Foundation. He's an advocate for school districts, and I would greatly appreciate if you could welcome them to the floor. There's some very important students from Ellenville. Thank you. Certainly. On behalf of Ms. Tenney, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome all of you to the chamber, extend the privileges to the floor, and hope you enjoy the proceedings. Thank you for joining us. All right. Education's huge. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, I got to tell you this, and I pronounced her name wrong. Her name is Cassandra Little, the girl that he introduced. And I just want to tell you, she is an active on social media. She's involved in sports. And this is what her uh, Twitter profile says. Own who you are. Never settle. Choose happiness. Dedicated student athlete. And she was just an incredible leader. She was taking the entire group around. And I, I give a lot of credit. I know Ellenville has problems with funding. They've had a downturn in their economy. But this girl was sensational. And uh, she was just an empowering human being. She was so inspiring. I see great future for her. I was going to say maybe a future <laughs> lawmaker. I mean, if, what's she, no, 17, <laughs> six, 16, 17? How yeah, old are they uh, seniors? She was 17 or 18, I think. I she think. is. She was just super and just so encouraging and inspiring. I, I just, I wanted to make sure, I, I know I said her name wrong, but it was hard to read their handwriting. It sounds <laughs> like, like little, she has, possesses a lot of wisdom. Yeah, for, really for wonderful, a, wonderful group. Yeah, All of them age. were great, but she stood out as someone who was really getting the group going and, and really advocating on behalf of Ellenville. Well, you mentioned Ellenville's had some hard times recently. Let's talk about education funding as a whole. That is mm -hmm. the major major sticking point every year with the budget. I mean, uh, the governor has yet to release education runs, probably won't at this juncture. Yeah, which is absurd because you're putting our school districts in a tough spot. They, you know, what, even though the runs are an estimate, school budgets are busy preparing their budgets to present to the public. By the way, the only group that really presents their uh, budget to the public generally, where you and I get to vote on it, yep. are school districts. So they're having, going to be really under the gun when they finally get their budget and find out where they're going to be because at least the school runs gave them an indicator of where the governor was going. Um, I thought this was a bullying effort by the governor to do this, the way he's talked about school districts and teachers and, and put in these ridiculous reforms, most of which I hope get rejected by the, the end budget. But a lot of them were unnecessary. It was, a, it was, just, a, it was just a shot at our public schools who do a really, really good job. I mean, I'm just looking at my area. We are underfunded. I'm for uh, adding and, and eliminating the gap elimination. I know that's sort of controversial, and people say that it's not necessarily, you know, the teachers are exaggerating. But we took the money away. Let's put the, the money in. Let's make them accountable like they are anyway. And let's make, like, fi finally properly fund schools. Stop sending unfunded mandates like APPR and this extra layer of bureaucracy that the gover governor wanted to create. All those things just hurt public schools. What happened to the uh, the mandate reform? You mean that uh, you mean the Medicaid redesign team, yeah, and mandate and all the, all these, reform, uh, yeah, and all that committees that were going all those look things into this. that get repurposed every year into something else that do absolutely nothing. Yeah, no, I've never seen. In fact, we still have an exploding Medicaid budget. Uh, part of that is because of the the institution of the Affordable Care Act, yeah. and then our adopting the health care exchanges. We saw what seventy at least seventy percent of the people that signed up for the affordable health care through the health care exchange ended up on Medicaid. So now we went from 52 to 58 to over 60 billion in this That's year's budget. The, oh my gosh. It's an incredible number. The largest uh, per capita uh, you know, cost is in, in New York. And you can put California and Texas together and you still don't equal yeah. New York. It's just... That's why property taxes are up. So the governor, reasons. this is, to me, a huge failure on the part of the governor. We need mm -hmm. to reform this. We've got to run. Assembly Thank Claudia you. Tenney, always a pleasure. Good job. Thank you for joining Thanks. us on this edition of Assembly Calendar. We will see you soon. I'm Ted Flint.